So you have traffic and traffic dashboard running, but can we make it a bit better and more secure using middlewares and middleware chains? Let's find out. Welcome back Geek Army. Anand here once again. In my last video, we did a lot of heavy lifting. We had our beautiful traffic version 3 dashboard running and we gave ourselves a big pat in the back, but we didn't put any apps behind traffic. It was like I took you to a very nice dinner and right before the dessert, I chickened out and I sneaked out. It was my fault, I was getting worried about the length of the video, but in my defense, it was already 1.15 am and I was getting very tired. Don't worry, let's fix it today, well at least partially. Before we get started, just a quick note, it is very hard to explain in words the amount of effort I am putting into making these videos, plus here on the left, so far what I have spent in making these videos and here's what YouTube ads have made so far. As you can imagine, it's very hard to sustain without your support. So please consider signing up for a membership on my website. Be a friend, like and subscribe while you are here. Okay, back to the topic. We're going step by step in building an ultimate Docker media server. The link to the playlist is in the description below. And if you're lost at any point, that link will be your friend. In this video, we're gonna see how to use middlewares and middleware chains to improve your traffic configuration just a little bit more and make it more secure. And then the stage is set for the climax, which is to put apps behind traffic, both Docker and non-Docker apps. So watch out for that video next. As always, we're gonna continue from where we left off. A few videos back, we had Docker media server up and running with few different apps. Then I showed you how to use bash aliases to simplify the management and usage of Docker and Docker Compose commands. This came in very handy with the very, very long traffic video. And today too, you will find we're gonna use some of those bash aliases. Okay, here I am on my ultimate traffic version three Docker Compose guide, which is what we used in my traffic video. We're gonna continue with this guide. We have traffic up and running. So let's just make sure if that is indeed the case. So I am SSH'd into my ultimate Docker media server. If you don't know how we got here, watch my previous videos. Let's check what containers are running on the server right now. So sudo docker ps or the fancy way with the bash aliases dps and it gives us the same result. So here you can see we have traffic version three running. We also have socket proxy running, which is a more secure way of exposing Docker socket. So we have traffic up and running. Let's also make sure if the traffic dashboard is available. So traffic.simplehomelab.com. Simplehomelab.com is the domain that I used for my videos. So here's our fancy basic auth pop-up. I have my super secret password, which is the same as my username. And here we are. So traffic is running. We have two different routers right there and a few different things. We're gonna be using the dashboard today as we go along. First, I said let's improve the traffic configuration a little bit, and by that, I mean we're gonna add a few more middlewares. You can see there's already two that are here. One Docker provider, which says that all HTTP traffic should be redirected to HTTPS traffic, which is this one, and then we have the basic authentication middleware. That was the pop-up that you guys just saw where I logged in. That's what is going to protect our services at least for now keep in mind also i mentioned this in my previous video basic auth is an okay protection but it's really easy to break it by brute force so i strongly suggest either you implement Othelia or google oauth both of these i have guides on my website i will put the link in the description below maybe one day i will cover authentic as well obviously all of these things are also possible with the automation from the auto traffic script if you haven't checked it out a part of it is also free so you can automate a lot of different things without having to pay anything back to the video we're going to continue where we left off as i said we have traffic up and running I said we're going to improve our configuration. By that, what I meant is we're going to add additional middlewares and middleware chains, right? 
First thing we want to do is create a middleware for rate limiting. Rate limiting, what does it do? It's a form of protection. It basically limits the number of requests that the server receives or can handle in a certain amount of time. Typically, if the server is being attacked, let's say by a DDoS attack, there's going to be a lot of requests that take up the resources from your server, thereby causing denial of service errors for others who are trying to reach your server. So rate limit can come in handy, but keep in mind, this is not the only protection. There are many, many higher levels of protection that you can go after. I do not claim to be an expert on this topic. We are just going to implement a basic rate limit protection. So here you can see the middleware we are going to use. So we're going to copy paste. It's very simple. So we're going to copy paste. We are not going to make major changes. This has worked well for me for years. So I'm just going to keep it as is. I'm using Mobax term as my SSH client, as I've explained 10 times probably already. I like the SFTP browser that's on the left. So I will use that to browse over to the traffic rules folder. Again, all of this was explained in my previous video. If you don't want to feel lost, check out my previous video. So into the app data folder, traffic three folder, roots folder, and UDMS, which is the host name of this device. So just like basic auth right here that you see, we are going to create a new file. This is going to be called middleware's rate limit, right? So as I said, I like to prefix all my file providers. If you notice, these are all file providers. In my last video, I explained the concept of static and dynamic configuration for traffic. These are dynamic configuration. What does that mean? Anything inside this rules folder will be picked up by traffic automatically without having to restart the service. So right now this is empty. So we're going to edit this like so. And when it opens, I'm going to paste what I just copied. All you have to do is hit save and we're done. Now, as I said, this is a dynamic configuration, which means it should take effect immediately which means if I go into the traffic dashboard and refresh it, actually, I don't even have to refresh it. You see, it's already right here. So middleware's rate limit is already active. Okay, so we're done with this one, but we haven't really added it to any of the services yet, right? As you can see in the guide, here's the line that you want to add. So how do we do that? Right now, only the traffic dashboard is behind basic authentication. Now, after the basic authentication is done, we want to add the rate limit layer, right? So we are going to do that. So how do we do it? Let's go back to Mobax term. I am going to open up my Docker compost file for traffic, which is inside the compost folder. If you're lost once again, watch my previous videos. I am taking you through a story. You will not regret it. It's really hard to find such coherent series of videos on how to set up a home lab. So check it out. Now let's edit our traffic, our traffic.yaml. It's open right here. If I scroll down the last line right here, unfortunately I can zoom, but I will make sure that this is zoomed in when I edit the video right here. You can see middleware's basic or the last line right there. So Right after this one, we are going to add the rate limit middleware. How do we do it? It's just like that middle where's rate limit, which is what we called it at file. Why at file is because this middleware is in a file or a file provider, which is inside the rules folder. So that's why we are doing that now. Actually, you know what? Um, you know what? I'm not going to save it right now because I want to show you guys something. So I'm going to hit no and it didn't save. Let's go over to my traffic dashboard right there. I have only one service, which is traffic. So right here is that service. So if I go into that, I'm going to see all the different things that this service is using. So here is the user's file, the middleware's right now. You can see only middleware that is active right now is this one right here, basic auth. So let's go back to my file and we are going to change. We already changed it, but we'll just have to save it now. I can save it without a change. I will save it. I'll make a change again save it now. So we added the middleware to traffic.yaml, which is the compost file. Now, 
this change that we just made in the compost file it's not dynamic which means traffic will not pick this up so if i refresh it it's going to be the same page and we're not going to see the middleware right so we will have to restart traffic of course you can use sudo docker compost-f and path to the docker compost file and up dash d traffic force recreate so this is going to recreate the service with a new middleware long command i just typed it this time so you guys know what it looks like and then from next time on i'm going to use my bash alias because i don't want to be typing forever so let's hit that and let's let traffic recreate now it's always always a good idea when you make changes to traffic configuration to check the logs how do we do that tail dash f slash home and docker logs keep going all the way this is how you check the log in real time we should be able to see traffic logs so far i don't see any issues there i don't see any middleware problems and all of that stuff so i think we're good so if i go back to my traffic dashboard i and refresh it maybe in this case i have to refresh it and here i can see already there are two middlewares one basic auth and then the rate limit one that we just added so we got two middlewares going already let's do the third one the next one is a big one it's called security headers these offer some sort of protection with the browser so um, we're gonna do that I do not claim to be a security expert a lot of these things I learned by reading and research over the years so I would be the wrong person to go and explain but what I can tell you is that they have worked really well for me for years I would trust them so and I have a huge uh, community on my discord server nobody has raised any issues in fact many people are already using it and so I think it's it's okay to use it but if you guys know more than I do feel free to comment on what I am adding here or if there's a way to make it better I would be interested I am learning from you guys as much as you are trying to learn from me as well so let's go back to my rules folder UDMS and create a new middleware middlewares and this time I'm gonna call it what was it secure I think it's called secure headers I just want to be sure I'm going to go head over to my github repository which if you guys are not familiar with everything that I run on my home and web server is right here there are many different hosts many different docker compost files scripts whatever you want to call it it's 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 here to, for you to get started so let's check it out I am going to go to the app data folder and the traffic and rules i am calling it middleware secure headers here so we're going to do it the same way why am i doing it this way interesting question you can call it whatever you want in fact you can call this file anything that you want traffic is still going to pick up the file it doesn't really matter what matters is how you call the middleware inside the file which i will show you in just a minute secure headers YML. okay so we created that I'm gonna right click this one and edit it and it's open here let's paste it here so we pasted it the name of the middleware actually just comes from right there so that's what is more important it does not really matter how you call the file once again there are lots of different things here some performance some security related things if you need explanation on these these things please refer to many different documentation that might be on the internet just select that and do a search and you will find out or ask ChatGPT what it means and maybe you will you will get a good answer as well who knows okay going back we're gonna save this yes i want to save it so if i go back to my dashboard and i go to the middlewares here i should see another one secure headers so we're good we have all the secure headers let's go back to my guide i think that's all we have but oh wait we didn't add the middleware to my service right the traffic dashboard so we go to traffic and we're going to do exactly the same thing middleware and secure headers add file now we save this and of course we'll have to restart traffic for this change to take effect so we're going to do dc rec my bash alias for docker compose recreate and traffic right so we recreated traffic let's once that restarts let's head over to the traffic dashboard and check if that middleware is taken so if i go to my routers i go to traffic i see it here 
and now we can see headers middleware right there and it has a lot of different information you can go through the whole thing it's basically coming from the settings that we had right and then we have the basic auth and we have the break limit so we are good next thing i'm going to share with you is that as your setup grows more and more let's say you add google oauth or you add Autelia. if you want guides on how to do it once again if you go at the top of my traffic guide you're going to find this ultimate docker server series and i go through step by step right here you would find Autelia and then google oauth those are detailed guides that will get you started if you don't have the patience of course i'm going to be making videos on this as well so stay tuned and uh, hit the notification bell so you know when those videos come out okay so let's go back to my guide wherever i was i think i was right here okay so the last thing i want to say is that when we start adding more and more middlewares, it becomes too lengthy to add those to different services. We can simplify that with the usage of chains, which is what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna create a chain called chain no auth. As I said, I like to prefix things. I want to identify a chain as a chain. It's my preference. It's not a requirement by traffic. So let's head over here and we're gonna create a new chain. So chain no auth. So what does this mean? No authentication. That's it basically. So what is this chain going to have? Let's edit and we're going to paste what we just copied from my guide and I'll explain what that means. So chain no auth is the name of the middleware and it's a chain of middlewares basically. And what middlewares are in this chain? The rate limit middleware and secure headers middleware. Notice that we're not putting basic auth middleware in here because this chain is for services that do not need authentication. And there might be some that do not need any authentication at all. In those cases, you would use this middleware. Maybe Plex, if you're making your Plex instance available outside your home internet, a home network, then you may not want to have uh, an authentication layer on, on top. Who knows, because Plex already has built-in authentication. So if you trust Plex's authentication, then you can leave it out and say, no part so this is the chain for that and then we're gonna we're gonna save it yes i want to save it so and then we're gonna create another chain you can see here we're gonna create a new one called chain basic art so obviously the only difference here is that this one has authentication middleware added to it so chain dash uh, basic art dot yml okay so let's edit this and we're gonna add what we copied over okay great so we created the chains but that does not mean that our services are using the chain so we have to go back and edit traffic once again so let's go over to our traffic docker compost it's right here now traffic dashboard we still want it behind authentication so what we want is the chain basic auth that's the chain that we want so what we're going to do right now we'll have to zoom in I can't hear so let me see if there's an option to zoom in I don't see it but here right here all the middlewares we're gonna remove them right now because we don't want any of those things right there so we are going to add a chain instead but the chain basically represents what we have here so it's going to be chain basic arc at file that's it simple now we have all of our middlewares added now this comes in handy when you start adding more and more middlewares like i said google oauth Autelia, and then maybe you decide to add crowdsec which is an awesome intrusion prevention system so if you want to do that all of those become middlewares and it makes it easy to add those middlewares okay so we did the change everything is done so far let's just make sure that our middlewares are in effect so if i go in here to the middleware tab, you do see that our chains are active right now so we are good to go with the chains okay that was it for today's video everyone i hope it gave you an idea of how traffic middleware and middleware chains work and how they can make our setup simpler this topic is very important as we follow this ultimate docker media server series and that's why i decided to make a dedicated video on this topic please like subscribe and hit that notification bell because the next video is going to be the end of all of our hard work which is to put apps both docker and non-docker apps behind traffic so watch out for that video that's it for today thank you for staying this long go geek army